We are grateful to God that, that this message is still preserved. The word of God is still there. The instructions are still there. And then God is giving us grace to strategize more and more on how to be more effective in carrying out this, this, this work of mission. The strategies we applied in the past may not be as effective as, as having new, newer strategies these days. And that's the reason we have to be up to date and understanding how our society runs so we can use whatever instruments are around us to do the work of missions, to bring God glory. Things are changing, things are developing, and we must at least work with the trends so that we fulfill God's purpose and bring God glory in the end. And I pray the Lord will enable us that from this conference, we would rise with that kind of passion to do more of what God has called us to do in Jesus' name. Today I want to, I want to go a little bit different from what I had done the first and second day. I want to do a brief hymn interpretation. Uh, Shagun, I don't know if you can have, if you have a uh, Rescue the Perishing. Rescue the Perishing. Uh, all right. Um, Rescue the Perishing is a hymn written by uh, Fanny Crosby. And Fanny Crosby was a blind uh, hymn writer. She did a lot of works. Um, in fact, up until now, I think she is still the uh, one, one person that wrote most of the hymns that we sing today. She wrote more than 9,000 hymns. More than 9,000 hymns. Uh, followed by uh, the one we call the father of, of English hymn Nadi, and that is uh, uh, Charles Wesley. All right? And he also wrote a lot of hymns, too, that we also sing um, today. But for Fanny Crosby, hymns like To God Be the Glory, uh, Rescue the Perishing, Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus our Redeemer, and so many of those hymns we sing today, uh, the Lord inspired her to write, and she was, she was uh, blind. But, you know, it's on record that um, she was devoted to the Lord, and um, at a certain age, she could recite Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, I mean, uh, uh, Numbers, Deuteronomy. She could recite, I mean, just sit down and begin to read scripture from, by heart. You know, that's how gifted she was. And uh, words were not difficult for her to use. She knew how to use words to, to uh, bring out something beautiful that be became the songs we, we sing today. Rescue the perishing. I wish we were able to project, but I would um, do my best to just do a brief teaching in 10 minutes on, on this. I'll take the reading from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Isaiah 61, verse 1. And it says, the, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Hallelujah. And if you, if you would look, this, this, this is exactly what Jesus Christ has also called us to do. When we see the version of the Great Commission in the book of Mark 2, he has commissioned us to do the same and, and, and given us the power to heal the sick. The power to heal the sick and to cast out demons. He has given us the power to rescue the perishing. So Fanny Crosby will write these words. She, she may not have the tune she might give to those words, but she writes a lot of poems. And then she had a lot of friends around her who were musicians. When she puts these words together, they help her put some tunes, put some musical lines to it, and, and that's how she had most of those, those hymns that we uh, sing today. Not many of them had her um, having the, the tunes, you know, uh, written by, by her or composed by her, but most of them she wrote the words, and somebody else who is gifted musically puts the tunes to those words. So, uh, one of the most tragic words in our vocabulary is the word perishing. Yet it was a word that Jesus himself often used. Like you have Matthew 18 verse 14, Luke chapter 13 verse 3. He used it to describe people who are spiritually alienated from God. Those who were away from God, those who have not come to the understanding of the seven knowledge of God. He used the word perishing. And of course that is the reason Jesus Christ actually came to save the world from perishing, to save us from Perishing. So, Fanny Crosby, often called the queen of gospel music, recalled how she wrote this challenging hymn. And the brief story she just gave here says, uh, I remember writing that hymn in the year 1869. Like many of my hymns, 
It was written following a person's experience at the New York City Boring Mission. He said, I usually try, tried to get to the mission at least one night a week to talk to my boys. I was addressing a large company of working men one hot summer evening when the thought kept forcing itself on my mind that some mother's boy must be rescued that night or he might be eternally lost. So I made a pressing plea that if there was a boy present who had wandered from his mother's home and teaching, he should come to me at the end of the service. And she said, a young man of 18 came forward. <laughs> Did you mean me? He asked her. I promised my mother to meet her in heaven, but as I am now, but as I am, as I am now living, that would be impossible. So she said, we prayed for him and suddenly he arose with a new light in his eyes. Now I'm ready to meet my mother in heaven, for I have found God. That was the boy's remark after she had ministered to him and, you know, they prayed for him and uh, the light of Christ dawned upon him and, and, and he received Christ in his life. So a few days before William Dorns composed the music for this song I'm, I'm going to sing for us now, that was called, uh, sorry, a few days after, uh, she wrote these very words and then William Dorn composed the music for it. So he, you see how some of these hymns came about. Most of the, the hymns we actually sing here have stories behind them. And, and, and that is what some of us are, are crusading for. You don't just write songs because you feel like just writing songs. But, but let, let, let there be something that motivates, that inspires you to put down some of these words so that these songs will outlive us and they will continue to serve the purpose of God and fulfilling this great commission for which God has called us. So this hymn is titled, Rescue the Perishing. Rescue the Perishing. The first verse says, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep over the erring ones. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Hallelujah. The second verse says, Though they are slighting him, still he is waiting. Waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly. Plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Then the chorus says, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful and Jesus will save. Abraham, can I have you on the keyboard? Verse 3 says, down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that, that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that are broken will vibrate once more. And what will cause this to happen when we preach this word, when we teach this word? It says, go, make disciples, baptize them, teach them, teach them to obey. You know, and we have a responsibility there. And the last verse says, rescue the perishing. Duty demands it. Strength for the labor, the Lord will provide. And of course, resources for the labor too, resources for for this instruction to be to be perfected the lord will provide hallelujah it says back to the narrow way patiently win them tell the poor wanderer a savior has died give us on b flat
it in the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings like buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that are broken will vibrate once more. Rest with the perishing, duty demands it, strength for the labor the Lord will provide. Back to the So I pray as we continue, the Lord will lay upon our hearts some soul and we'll be, we'll be moved by the Spirit to insist until they are saved. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. So following our sister's request today, we've got some Arabic Bible. I brought one and I want to give it to her today. And please, you know, uh, we, we, we can always communicate and we have some of them. The, the pastor can, can be able to get us even some Fulani Bible. I have one full Annie Bible in the office. I can't read it. I have the Arabic one, and I've brought it that that's our brother must be given this, this Bible. And I think when we communicate that way, we're able to get most of these things around. The Lord will bless us and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.